which used full-size pickup truck with a diesel engine is the best. Let me read my notes. Ah, here we go. There's only three that you can buy here at this particular auction. Yeah, we're here at Dealer Auto Auction and we have three very unique examples. I've been wanting to put these three trucks together for like five years. We have the Eco Diesel 3 liter. Right. We have the Power Stroke 3 liter V6 and the Duramax 3 liter. 3 liter? Three 3 liters. Well, let's drive them around and see what they're like. Nathan, let's start with the Eco Diesel. Yes, and I'm pulling the latch right now. There it goes. Yes, there we go. Nathan, this is a 2014 Ram 1500 and it has a lot of miles and it looks to have a kind of a tough life. Well, this actually had a tough life. One of the things that happened with this original Eco Diesel, okay, is that it went through a recall. There were some things happening behind the scenes that really made it not perform the way it was supposed to perform, so to speak. And moving forward, these things frankly had a rather bad reputation, only based on numbers, not in terms of reliability, because I think these things were relatively robust. Yeah, so 240 horsepower was the original rating, 420 pound-feet of torque. Back in like nine years ago, those were really good numbers. Yes. Eight-speed automatic. Uh -huh. What else do you want? I mean, it's a half-ton truck diesel that people have been asking for. That's right. Now, this one is a 4x4 as well. But here's the most important part. Mm. Discontinued. They no longer allow this engine in this truck. Which is why it could be affordable. Ah. Well, let's drive it. <laughs> yeah, this, it sounded like my dad years and years ago. Is the seal on the door a little squeak? No, no, no. It's just farting. This is great because it gets to release gases that it's been trapped otherwise. <laughs> maybe not. So this is a little bit more of a simple. Uh, I can't quite tell. Is this a big horn or is this? Doesn't feel like it. Uh, it's not a Laramie or it's not a long horn. So. It is. <gasps> mm -hmm. It's got a owner's manual. Yes, I don't want to show the no, no, registration. No. Don't you guys look. Oh, Dude, this is. Buying a nine-year-old vehicle with an owner's manual. I was kind of hoping they would say this is something really great. But it doesn't say what this is. There was a badge on the tailgate. I forget exactly what it said. All right, let me look before we get going. Outdoorsman, Nathan. Is it an outdoorsman? Yes, it's, it's your favorite. It's gotta be the base version of it. It's your favorite. Yeah, like, it's my favorite. So this is the base version of the outdoorsman, and that makes it actually kind of cool. I was just kind of curious to what was in here. There's a lot of napkins. This thing has seen a lot of drive throughs What's the Outdoorsman? The Outdoorsman is their entry level into off-roading, but it's a little bit more like what a hunter would buy if they didn't want to spend the ridiculous amount of money on getting, let's say, oh, I don't know, a Ram Rebel. This is um, actually the first place that there's always issues. What? These keys, this slot thing, uh -huh. a lot of people have problems with those down the line. Okay, well, it's been a lot of miles on this one, 115,000. Oh, starts, starts right up. Yeah, smooth. Um, Nathan, we do have a check engine light. Okay, that's going to be so commonplace. So there could be some issues. Obviously, we're not one brake light out, it says. Okay, that could be a simple fix. Uh -huh. um, we still have, like, what, an 8.4-inch screen? Yeah, it's not too bad. Let me go in four-wheel drive and see if that works. You really want to do that now? Yeah, this oh. is all auto, dude. Okay. It's okay. And four-wheel drive lock. All right, so we're able to drive these guys on a kind of a short loop. Yeah. But we can do an acceleration and see how healthy the, the engine feels. Oh, it's moving along nicely right now. Oh, yeah. And it's also pretty quiet. Very quiet. In yeah, here. yeah. Um, it's this is the remarkable thing about these new batch of diesels. All of them, of course, three liters, whether they be straight sixes or V6s. Yeah. But a majority of them run very quiet. And when you jump out of one of these and then jump into a heavy duty truck, like a Cummins, all of a sudden you're like, guy, 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 guy. very manly. Yeah, it's very it's a totally different feel. Uh, but these things really were suited to drive day to day. And by comparison, when you look at a v8 or whatever that it'd be compared against these are much more efficient i remember i was talking to you when this truck was first launching you went to the original event with yep. roman 
you talk to the engineers, everybody was super excited because in the United States, we didn't have a light duty truck with a diesel until no, this, this came along. No, this was one of the first that was introduced in terms of the modern era. I know a lot of you guys are like, wait a minute, there were all, yes, there were older ones, but th this is in terms of the modern era. And at the time, we were all freaking out because these things got stupid good mileage um, and they were very compliant in terms of smog and everything else, but then reality kicked in a little bit later on. We realized that, okay, maybe there's some issues. Well, range was important, right? Mm -hmm. But before we discuss more, let's accelerate on our, a little stretch, this little I drag. love how straight you are right now. This is great, go for uh, it. <laughs> I put my life in your hands. Uh, I, I do have diesel and I'm full of death. Let's go. I'm sure you are. <laughs> a little delay. And then it kicks in, 30 miles an hour that moves. and 40. Kind of like new. Especially yes. because we haven't tested the brakes yet, so this is awesome that you did that right in front of a, a cement barrier. By the way, this is a day-to-day -day life of TFL. Uh, this is what we do all the time, just throw our lives in other people's hands. Uh, I but, do trust But you Andre. know me. I, I do, I do we trust We went to you. like 40 states together in the Jeep. God, close Once. to like 42 states, uh, yeah, right? Yes. Yeah, so anyway, uh, the good news is this thing runs just fine. Interestingly, what? I've been trying to turn down the temperature and it's not happening. Um, oh, so AC may not be working? Maybe. Oh, how about happens. now? Let's see what happens here. Ah, it's getting a little cooler. And this vent doesn't work. Okay, so but look, we're not selling the truck to you guys individually. What we're doing is we're just kind of showing you the differences. So this one is technically the oldest one of the group. However, yes. the Ford it has an old component in it as well and it has something to do with that green vehicle in front of us oh you thought you're talking about the land rover diesel i am but how about this how about we save the ford for last what's, whatever you want to do what say you i say you are the truck guy uh, whatever i'm i want to do right. i want to drive the duramax next okay we'll do the duramax but before we uh finish uh, our time in this truck i also want to point out that i think when this outdoorsman Eco Diesel came out. I love it. You and I were trying to figure out how to sell our house or I don't know, mortgage a kidney or something because it's a it's a it's an off-road ready truck with a diesel. I mean, think about it. You have all of that torque and you have excellent range at the time. I mean, it was just like, wow, there are very few issues with it. Frankly, this is one of the things I didn't like. Um, uh, I, the, I, the selector. Yeah, I can't stand that selector. I know you guys are like, oh, it's perfect. Okay, fine, whatever. But the, anyway, that was one of the issues. But the other issue I had with it, frankly, was that I think the least expensive one of these was still about 50 grand. And at the time, I just couldn't do it. Yeah, yeah. but m maybe now you can. I don't want to use one. <laughs> I, have right. a, I have a little truck. So at the end of this video, we'll give you kind of an idea about values mm -hmm. on these uh, because our expert, uh, Brandon, is also here. Yeah, so is Brendan. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so he'll help us, right? Yes, he will. Unless I mispronounce his name That's again. That's okay, do it again. I want to do it. Can you pop this hood, please? Oh, it yeah, actually... Do that first try. All right. Actually working. All right. So under the hood here is an, a three liter engine, but it's not a V6. No, this is a straight six. And this is actually, a fair, this is the most recent design, really, if you think about it. But it's recently been updated. And it is admittedly one of our favorite powertrains. But back in 2021, which is what this truck is. Uh -huh. By the way, it has what, 52,000 miles? Ish. Um, the original rating on this engine was 277 horsepower. Right. So a little bit more than the Ram. Right. And 460 pound feet of torque. Once again, a little, a little bit, bit more, more than the Ram, but it had to be because it had to compete with the Ram. Right. Right. So, yes. And also, this engine came out a little bit after the engine in, in this. the Ford, which yes. we will discuss last. Now, important note here: unlike the um, Duramax uh, that you would get in a heavy-duty vehicle, they're not related really at all, are they? No, it's just the branding. Yeah, the it's branding. Just the branding. Yeah. And one final note is that, as far as I know, uh, no major issues about, oh, I don't know, emissions or anything like that. No, no recalls, I mean, related to emissions right. or uh, no lawsuits on, on this one. Okay. And it's still on sale and it has a 10 speed automatic. Okay, so let's go. Well.
So Nathan, what do you have here? Uh, dealership that's not, okay, worth any uh, wiring. This looks like for- Oh, this is good. This is an engine block heater wire. This is uh, Brendan's beard. A little brushy for his no, beard. No, no, no. Okay. And this is instructions how to hook up that engine block heater. Oh, this is very important. And okay. And then we have all these different cleaners. I'm not sure if I'm happy about this or uh, not. Did you bring like alcohol wipes? Because Yes, I, I, I did. <laughs> We have a key and it's a push button start, so no longer a twist. <laughs> this truck did lose its uh, rear view mirror. Yep, this is one of the casualties. Okay. Is this a eight speed or 10 speed transmission? This is a 10 speed, so it should ah. be really, really smooth. We're a little bit low on diesel. A lot of vehicles at the auctions are usually low on fuel. Uh -huh. And we're also a little bit low on tire pressures, but not yes. awfully low. But only on the right side. <laughs> Okay, that's important. Yeah. But column shifter, dude, no no dials. Yes, I, and I'm very fond of that. Let's accelerate. Oh, hey. Okay. Seems to run just oh, fine. And we've recently driven these things. Um, I mean, pretty recently. When was the last time we had one well, of these? Well, actually, I just drove it in Montana. It's oh, the 2024 wow. model year. Not only is the power levels higher than before, uh -huh. right? Now they increased the power to 305 horsepower and 495 pound-feet of torque. But um, it was also inside of an off-road ready truck, the 84X AEV edition. Now see, that is huge in my book because yeah. I've already driven the older version, this version of the uh, this powertrain yeah. inside of a Yukon. And I went cross country oh, oh, and, yes. and it got really good mileage and there was no problem with power. So for the most part, this powertrain really is a step up for a company that keeps saying that they're going to be going all electric. I just think that's interesting. Oh, by the way, I just noticed we also have an engine light on. Yes, of course we do. <laughs> it well, seems to be par for the course for the auction. We're in an auction. I mean, there's probably a really good reason why it's here. Because otherwise it's in relatively good shape and it has all of these things to make it smell better, which is and, scary. And it's also a Z71. So the outdoorsman was kind of an off-roady version already. And the Z71 is kind of Chevrolet's version of that. So it has its own mechanical LSD. Yes, a G80, my friend. G80 old school, baby. All right. So yeah, we're, um, we should be used to a truck like this because this is very similar to the setup of the one All when right. we had our trail bus. So I'm selecting four wheel drive auto because I also have that here. Okay. Um, and I'm gonna accelerate in a similar fashion. Okay. Actually, I believe I have right. brakes, I do have brakes. Okay, thanks for testing without saying anything. Okay. That was great. <laughs> and now, are you ready for this? Yeah, charge. Whoa. The power comes up yeah. a lot sooner. Yeah, and we're already at 40 miles an hour. Okay, something went funk in the back. There's something in the bed. Probably a body, but it's okay. It's only an auction. So here's the good news. This thing runs, at least for us, like a champ. Yes. Pulls like crazy, which is already what we've liked about the powertrain. And I would say that it's just as quiet as the Durham, um, the, um, Eco diesel. Yes, we I would. Just I would agree. Easily is quiet. You really like that brush, don't you? This is by the power of Brendan's beard. Okay. This is his Christmas gift. So you have just kind of like blessed us. Uh, with I this. have. Well, with his his red ginger beard, I'm able to you know bless things. Yes. But more importantly, yeah, I, this is one less gift I have to worry about. Look, it still has the uh, SKU number on it. Yeah. Yeah. So by the way, we obviously this engine came out only what 2020 ish. Yeah. So we are not able to find like the same year as the original Eco Diesel, right? Right. Which makes this truck more expensive because it's newer. That is correct. Um, according to our expert, the 2014 Eco Diesel is currently running around twenty thousand dollar on the on the open market okay. for a four wheel drive for this type of mileage. For that mileage, uh -huh. and this truck is running closer to f what did he say fifty? 50 what geez like forty-eight thousand. really for this but, well for a similar for a truck in good condition with this mileage well that's that's actually good for general motors and those people who like them because but it's not 80 or 90 well no but like it, a brand new truck would be that's the thing is the brand new trucks are ridiculous so the question of course is is it worth your while to take one of these things and have it plugged in and then have to repair it that's that is true that's a good question i'm gonna give brendan his uh Christmas gift. Hey, Brandon. Uh, Merry Christmas. It's for your beard. Nice. Yeah, yeah, you're welcome. Wait, where was this? 
in the bottom of this. Oh man. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'll take it back. I'll take it um, back. I'll, I'll, I'll get you some wipes. Hold okay. on a second. Okay. Yeah. Hold on a second. I'll give this to Roman. That'd be great. Oh, this just. <laughs> Maybe the other side? If we lock the keys in there, it's a bad day. <laughs> oh, okay, that's okay. All right, this goes back to the next person. Now I have some of Brendan's hairs in there, so we already have his DNA in the truck in case there's a problem. This is perfect. Hey, Thank you. Know, you. Some people would pay a lot for that. I, I, well, we were blessing everything by saying that by the power of Brendan's beard. By the way, he called me Brandon twice. Just so you know. Nathan, please do the honors. What? Ah. So the reason why I'm really excited about this video and specifically this truck is because you and I know this engine First of all, from Land Rover days. Yes. But also from 2018 to 2020, those years in the previous generation of this truck, this engine also existed. It's a really unusual thing, just not very popular. And also a really expensive upgrade if you wanted an F-150 back in the day, which was crazy because General Motors took a different, you know, they went a different direction, I yeah. should say. And they made it much less expensive in order to get that engine. This one, I mean, wasn't it like five grand more or something like that? It was a lot, it was Maybe. a lot of dough. But was the, when this engine came out, it really had to compete with this. Yes. Uh, which it did on power, 250 horsepower rating, uh -huh. and then also 440 pound-feet of torque. And it is related to a Land Rover design. Right. Uh, but, but it was built here for F-150 uh, tasks. 10-speed automatic in this thing, right? Yep. Yeah. Uh, we, by the way, are guessing that this is a former airport vehicle, and it has been used heavily. And it has a lot of miles. How many miles? Uh, 134,000 and it's a 2021. <laughs> so it's a couple of years old. Yeah, that is a lot of mileage. And it's kind of used up. Yeah, you're gonna see a lot of rust on the outside of it and that's mostly because of this roof rack. It has nothing to do with the paint that the thing came with. Look at this. All this cancer well, inside of this thing leaking on the well, roof and it's everything. It's hilarious because also it's ironic because this truck is aluminum and it doesn't rust, but it has all rust all the way around it. Yeah, poor thing. You know, we should take it for a drive and see if it can, you know, okay. it's drive better than it looks. But um, this engine is also discontinued. So the eco diesel is discontinued and this engine is also no longer on sale. Ah, there's the Ford Chime. So this has a six person configuration yeah. and it's kind of a work truck model. I would say so, considering that we do think it worked at Denver International Airport. And also, because it's a work truck or XL, um, it doesn't have an automatic mode in a four-wheel drive system, mm. uh, which was similar to what I had on my hybrid, F-150 hybrid I used to own. Okay. So, not a big deal. It's just a little bit more simple, a little bit more affordable for what it is. Okay. So, yeah, you got a key. Yeah, actual Yay. key. And this has the table I always wanted. Yeah, sorry. This Aubrey. is a, this is, this is, I wanted to order this. Look at this. I can have my laptop. I can write articles and I, right here. Yeah, sorry. That's, I guess you'll have to maybe next time. Okay. Fire up. Yep. Oh, sorry. No, that's all right. I can tell you already, just judging by the engine sound, it's a little tiny bit louder than the other two. It's, it's fine. Yeah, you can kind of tell it's there. It's there. But it's not bad. No, that's... Ah, this was owned by a smoker, too. Oh, great. Well, let's turn down the heat. Yeah, they got massive... <laughs> AC. There uh, we go. Column All right. shift. Yeah. And may I point out, I check engine light. Well, so that, that, at least all three are the same. And I wouldn't open that. There's some napkins sticking I'm out. I'm not going to touch wouldn't, that. I wouldn't I, touch I'm that. already having a hard time with this seat. Something's crawling up my back. I don't know what it is. I'm sorry? It's got eight legs at least. It's cool. <laughs> yeah, we're good. All right, well, let's see what the power stroke has to offer. And you know, I think the discontinuation of this engine in the Ford lineup had another reason. Well, the um, hybrid, it's, it's the be. hybrid. Yeah, exactly. Because the hybrid had more horsepower, more torque. It, in certain instances, like city driving, it was more efficient. Uh, yeah, and it was a little bit affordable, I mean, too. And it was so, more utilitarian. I mean, yeah. you had that, uh, all the power that you were able to get in the tailgate. I mean, all that stuff made for a much better seller. And frankly, these things just didn't sell particularly well. Um, not that there was anything wrong with them. We just never see them. Front parkade sensor blocked. Okay. Well, it just got some dirt on it. Yeah. I'm not going to hold that against it. 
I'm gonna do a brake check. Are you ready? I'm gonna be nicer to you now. Thank you. Okay, we do have brakes. Yeah. But my sensor is blocked. Yeah, lots of warnings going on there. Okay, and this truck also has a, uh, a topper and a, lot, a bunch of weight in the back. Well, it's not as much weight because it's all rusted away. So, um, and I'm only referring to the rust that's on the roof rack because as you said, this thing is aluminum on the outside. All right. I remember, um, I think we did this eye gauntlet together in 2018 with this engine. I think you're right. And I think Mr. Truck was there too. Yeah, and it did fine. Yeah, it did. I think the Dodge beat it though, or the Ram. Didn't we do it against the Ram? I think so. Yeah. And, and so the key to Ram Eco Diesel was, it was the kind of the king of towing efficiency. Right. And this was having trouble kind of keeping up, keep, keeping up with that. Yes, I think that was so Are you nice. ready for the major acceleration? Yes, yes, gun it. Punch it, Chewy. Okay, a little bit of uh, oh, delay, yeah, but then... Nowhere near as... I mean, it's fine. Uh, that's about 30, 38 miles per hour. I would call it leisurely. There's a falcon flying away. Falcon. Um, so... So I would judge it... It doesn't feel like it's lost any ponies, though, since it was new, you know what I mean? Not Even though much. it's got a gazillion miles on it. That's a, that's a positive. And it feels similar to the Eco Diesel in, in its behavior. You yeah. know, a slight delay and then the power builds and it accelerates. That's yeah. kind of how it feels. Yeah, it's, it, there's no major rush. It definitely does not have the urgency of the GM engine at all. But it's smooth. Yeah, it's pretty smooth. And the gear changes were fine. So all of that is, you know, all three of these trucks I think are quite good. Now we did pass a <laughs> Nissan Titan XD. Where is it? It's over there somewhere, I don't know. It doesn't matter. Um, the point is, is that that is another discontinued diesel, but it's not technically a truck like this. It doesn't compete technically with the half tons. As such, we're not gonna cover it. It's just, it's almost- and it's a, a bigger th engine, it's a V8. Yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's a five liter, yeah. completely different. So anyway. With all that being said, there is an important thing to note here. Yes. And I think you're the right person to ask about this. Diesel engines are more expensive to maintain than gas engines. Am I correct? Yeah, you're absolutely right. And if you were asked, if you would ask me, should I buy an EcoBoost or a Power Stroke, uh -huh. let's say in the same year, I would say it depends on how much you drive. Ah. Would you agree with that? I would say, I would wager that if you drive 25,000 miles a year or more, then a diesel makes sense to you because overall highway efficiency, mm -hmm. you could recoup some of those higher fuel prices right. and maintenance prices. Okay. But if you don't drive very much, a diesel doesn't really make sense. Right, so if you're just a regular commuter who occasionally tows and occasionally goes off road or whatever, then a gas engine amongst these three would make more sense. All right, well now we have to have some sort of verdict. Oh, let's, let's go outside. Okay. Easy. So in the end, where would you go? Which three liter would you choose for the price, I guess? I'm gonna take my glasses off in a dramatic way. Whoa! Andre, this sounds strange. As much as I love that straight six in the Chevy. Yes. I would probably choose the Ram because I adore that package. I do, I do. It's something about it, just I like the looks of the truck and I like the package. I know that that engine is no longer as powerful as it was before, but I've heard that they last a long time. You know, I would pick the same thing. Shut the front door. Because, because at 40 or $45,000 for the newer diesels right. that we're looking at, there's no way to call it affordable. No, there's not. So how and much is this one worth? around 20 maybe 19. see that's actually and it's thing. because it's older yeah that's the only reason but the it's mileage a, is all that different from I, these I, other I ones i know yeah so um when they retune them for emissions uh lawsuit uh -huh. they, they have a little bit more delay so if you could live with that um i would go eco diesel